We are live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, another Van Hack webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how to hire and support Ukrainian tech talent. Um, give a quick update. Uh, but before we get started, as always, let's just do a quick check to make sure we're actually online. Um, so I'm seeing we have some great folks here with us. Uh, if people could just say hi, uh, maybe where they're calling in or joining us from. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm Ilya, co-founder and CEO here at, at Van Hack. Really happy to be here and have everyone with us. Uh, we're going to have a really jam-packed hour full of a lot of really useful content uh, and information to help you make a big impact in people's lives uh, by hiring tech talent from Ukraine. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out where the speaker or oh, sorry, where the chat is. I'm just seeing my DMs. Got it. Okay. Hi from Vancouver. Hi from Ireland. WB Games. Awesome. I'm guessing that's in Montreal. Hi, Logan. Hi, Camila from Toronto. Uh, great. Hey, Rachel from Halifax. Hey, Carrie. Oh, hey, good to see you here, Carrie. Long time we'll see. Um, hey, from Romania. Wow, great. We have a very uh, broad range of, of uh, locations. Athena, good to see you here again. Um, and Thea, sorry, I did that again on the last webinar. I mispronounced your name twice. I'm so sorry. And Thea, good to see you here again. I believe you've also hired some some uh, fan hackers from Ukraine, which is really great. Hey, Nicole. Um, hi, everyone. All right, so it looks like it's working. Just want to make sure everyone feels welcome and we're set, we're setting things up. So uh, let's get into it. We have a lot to cover, as I mentioned, uh, and we have three incredible speakers joining us today to go over uh, how to immigrate the uh, people, how the visa process is working, how to actually work with and, and interview, um, you know, and understand how to talk to candidates, as well as how uh, to, we're going to hear from a success case. Um, uh, so first up, we have Karan, um, Karan Dali, who is the head of immigration, head of mobility here at VanHack. Uh, he's going to be talking about the, the visa process. Uh, then we have Cecilia, um, whose last name I, I, <laughs> I'm going to say wrong, Vidlowski. Um, and uh, she's uh, one of our best uh, talent managers, recruiters here and leading a team lead here on the recruiting team uh, at VanHack. Uh, and she'll be talking about, uh, she's been interviewing and chatting with candidates from Ukraine for the last, uh, I guess, month and a half. Um, so she's got a lot of really great insights on best practices on actually how to interact with candidates, you know, given the sensitive situation that we're going through. Um, and then last but not least, we have Giros uh, Bordis, uh, uh, <laughs> who's joining us uh, from, uh, he's the head of talent at Forma.ai. Um, and he's actually hired a, a van hacker, a software developer from Ukraine. Um, as well as many other candidates over the years. Um, he's a, definitely an expert in talent acquisition, uh, talent attraction, um, and we're going to get his insights on a practical example of real life, what happened, how it worked, and, and um, yeah, here are all the details. Uh, and of course, we're going to have time for your question uh, to answer all your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll definitely have time at the end, but you know, if there's any burning questions, you can, you can pop them in the chat. We'll, we'll try to get to them that way. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's start off with uh, kind of the visa immigration um, updates because there's been a lot of changes recently. I want to make sure everyone is aware of that. So, uh, Karan, uh, you know, please join us and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump in. Thanks, Ilya. Yeah, thanks for the intro. Um, so, as Ilya mentioned, yeah, I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant here in Canada. Um, and uh, the, I'll give you a whole high level overview of the new program that um, Canada has put together. Um, we've never really seen a program like this before. Um, so it's the, what it's called is the Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel Program, um, shortened it's C-U-A-E-T. Um, so I'll give you a high-level overview, uh, some of the eligibility and some of the updates as well that we've seen from now. So um, as I mentioned, it's never really been done before. Um, with this program, it's eligible for any Ukrainian citizens or um, anyone who's a spouse or common law partner of somebody um, who's a Ukrainian national as well. So, and this person doesn't need to be in the Ukraine. They can be anywhere in the world as well as um, inside Canada even to be eligible for the program. Um, through the program, the other nice thing is it, it, uh, a job offer is not even needed. So right now we have people applying from all over the world. Um, I believe currently there have been about 140,000 applications submitted as of last week. Um, and 46,000 have been approved since then as well. Um, and there's no cap on you know, how many applications they're allowing through this program. Uh, and all application fees have been waived. Um, and normally programs do require uh, a passport to be provided as well. 
um, if somebody has lost or a damaged passport, they can still you know, get a one-time um, passport exemption as well. Um, it's also a priority processing is, is, is being taken place here as well. So um, we're finding about most applications take about 14 days from the time that an application is um, submitted. Um, there are a few steps, um, so I'll go over those in just a bit. Um, and when this application goes through, essentially it's about a three-year visitor visa and work permit option that is provided to Ukrainian candidates. So um, they have, what, the, the steps are this, they would apply from abroad, um, uh, or again with, from within Canada. And then the second step is to, to do something called biometrics. So it's fingerprinting that's required uh, to do like a security background check. Uh, once this biometric stage is done, the third step is for, uh, after the approval, is for um, them to submit their passport. Um, they would send it by mail um, to the local uh, visa center and then have it returned with a visa stamp. And then from there, they can they can enter Canada. Um, really, the main stage where I think um, things are, what we're actually seeing right now, um, because there's, there's been a, a large capacity of actual applications that have been submitted, um, IRCC, so the uh, Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada, they've actually relocated a lot of uh, staff to neighboring countries around the Ukraine in order to increase the operational readiness um, so that just to manage all the uh, different applications. They um, they have mobile biometric stations now as well. Um, but the major backlog has been because they have so many applications, um, especially in countries such as Poland, they are um, currently the biometric appointments are, are being a little bit delayed so it's just based on um uh, the the amount of employees that they actually have to be able to uh, go through these biometrics so um what we're seeing is a lot of people are actually traveling to the neighboring countries uh, north macedonia um, austria uh, just to be able to get the biometrics but once they're able to do this we're seeing about two weeks of, of processing time so um and then yeah they're able to come to to canada um, I think that's pretty much it about the CUAT program. Uh, I think the main thing is just that it really is um, it's, it, it, it is really fast and anyone can apply again without a job offer. So I think our main goal is to send this information to as many people as possible so that they are, um, you know, using the resources to go ahead and, and do this application. So um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us afterwards and post it in the chat as well about any of these immigration programs. But um, going forward, I'll just pass it on to Cecilia, who will kind of go over the best practices when inter interacting with uh, Ukrainian candidates. Perfect. Thank you for the introduction, Karen. So I'm Cecilia uh, Bidlovsky. <laughs> uh, I am a talent manager uh, and recruiter here um, in VanHack. Uh, I, I lead a, a group of recruiters, um, and we have today a lot of recruiters that have been reaching out uh, here in VanHack to uh, talk to Ukrainian um, nationals and understanding their situation. So today what I want to uh, bring to the table is um, a little bit of what are the best practices, uh, the do's and don'ts of um, when approaching a candidate, um, when uh, the tone to use, a little bit about uh, how we will work with um, relocation, working remotely, uh, and really understanding that it's always a people first approach and how do we uh, um, make these people comfortable in such such an unsettling time and such an adverse uh, circumstance. So I want to bring some stories and I also want to bring a little bit of what to do uh, and uh, what we have been seeing uh, here in the front line. So we have been um, re uh, we have been interviewing uh, a lot of Ukraine uh, people from Ukraine. And uh, from what we can see is that first and foremost, we need to be compassionate. So when starting uh, to approach these candidates and speaking to these candidates here in our team, uh, what we try to do uh, first and what we tell uh, our uh, the companies that are hiring partners to do is to start off as understanding what the situation is. So first of all, like just uh, let them know and let these candidates know that um, you're here to uh, know what's happening, to understand how uh, things are going and if they are okay uh, with having that conversation at that time. So this is how we start a conversation with them. We send them messages, uh, understand if they are um, willing to take part in what we have to and how we have to see ourselves, um, both like Van Hack and companies, uh, is as we are uh, waving an opportunity. We are offering a bridge for people that want to um, go um, either to Canada or other places in Europe 
and um, not that uh, and being aware that uh, this might not be a possibility for everyone that's there. Uh, there is um, a lot of evacuations uh, happening. Um, displacements are very common at this point. So it's important to have that first understanding and um, being mindful of what is happening at that point. So we had, uh, I like to bring the situation so you can have a better grasp of what's going on. Going on. So I had during a call with a candidate um, uh, a bombing alert uh, with this candidate during the call. So what to do in this kind of situations? Because this might happen to you while you are doing your process as a company, as a recruiter, um, as a hiring manager. So uh, one of the things that I like to tell my um, my hiring partners that are doing this, and if they go through this, is to understand what the person wants at that moment. Uh, do you want to keep talking? Do you want to talk about something else? Uh, do you need, do you prefer um, uh, doing, um, talking about the position itself? Do you want to talk about what's going on? Do you just want to hang up? And that's what's going to happen. Uh, just understand what's best for that person. For this person, this candidate in particular, it was much best for them to actually stay in the call and talk to me. So I just kept my calm, which is very, very uh, hard at this moment. Uh, kept my calm and talked to the candidate and understood uh, what the candidate was going through uh, regarding their experience. And this was like a good uh, thing for this candidate in particular. For other, other candidates I had and we had here at Van Hack, uh, other recruiters have had that opportunity. For example, when we are talking about tone and messaging, when you are reaching out to them, how do you do that? What's the best way of doing that? Uh, we need to exercise empathy at this point. So instead of like um, overflowing them with messages and uh, why are you not taking part? Why are you not applying for my position? Or uh, why are you, would you like to apply for this position? Uh, let's always keep it um, open for the possibility that you might not have a response at that time. Or you might have a response that it's like, I had a lot of these kinds of responses. I would love to take part, but this is not the right situation. Like this is not the right time. So those are some things that you're going to uh, get back from candidates uh, and understand that, okay, this might not be the best time, but often candidates tell me, Cecilia, uh, in a month from now, or when the situation is better, I would love to get back to this opportunity and talk to this uh, company and understand if they're willing to um, uh, relocate me to Canada, for example. So it's all about understanding what the, what the candidate wants, what the people want, what's best for them at that specific moment, because it's such an adverse moment that sometimes we cannot grasp from where we are right now. So it's very, very important to have um, a lot of sensitivity. How do you communicate that? Um, uh, one of the things uh, that I like knowing is like, I, I like telling my, my hiring partners is like, there is more that you can do. So um, if you're doing your process, you can streamline your process as well. So uh, understand when it's best for them to talk. Uh, I have a company that has actually done uh, all the process pretty much in one day uh, with the candidate. And this was much better for this candidate to understand that they might not have enough time. They might not have the right resources. Uh, I also had a candidate, for example, that I was talking to them uh, by WhatsApp. I felt that that was a good way of communicating, like of receiving faster replies and understanding how they are. Uh, and this candidate, I was telling them like, well, when would you be able to do the interview? Would it be good for you when it's the best time? And they came back to me saying that they actually lost um, their, their uh, computer drowned while they had to move away from um, Ukraine. So some things uh, we might not be thinking of. We sometimes are thinking like, yeah, we want to help. We want to get this uh, people as fast as possible to start working again, to help them rebuild what they have uh, missed. But they might not have like the simplest of tools that we work with every day, which might be a computer. So that's something to also uh, think of. And uh, another thing that um, I like uh, reinforcing uh, is that uh, when we're talking um, uh, about these candidates, not everyone wants to relocate at this time. Some people would like to be with their family. Some people would uh, like to help their, um, their fellow nationals. Uh, some people are not going to be able to leave. Uh, I know that um, up to this point, male, um, uh, male nationals are not able to leave so far. 
uh, to relocate at this point. So uh, make sure that if you're offering um, a position, um, let's think about remote work. Uh, this would be a great way of them to start. Uh, so why not offer them the possibility of remote work if they are in a part of the country that um, it's not going through a lot at this moment. So a lot of the, um, of the cities in the West, I've been talking to a lot of candidates from the West and they are okay with starting remotely. Like they know that um, it's not the best time, but they are safe, they are okay, they can start it and they are not willing to leave at this point. Not only because they can't, but as well because they would like to stay uh, with their families and help as much as possible. So also, um, uh, let's think about uh, those cases, those specific cases that might be um, that people might not want to leave at this point. Um, some um, some other uh, things that I would like to uh, to talk about as well uh, is about the response uh, and time, uh, the response time and frequent frequency. Uh, of the uh, of the emails and the communication that you have with these candidates, uh, sometimes like uh, there, it's not going to be infrastructure as I told you. Uh, they are uh, impacted by targeted bo uh, bombings. I had one candidate sending me an email, sending us an email, um, telling that this is not the time. Uh, I lost my um, uh, we lost our city. Um, my family is uh, on the move. Uh, this is not the circumstance that um, I would like to look for another job. So we're talking about survival versus uh, finding a job. And um, this is not something that they're going to be thinking of at that moment if um, something is happening with their families or with their home cities. Um, so it's important to have that in mind. And maybe they won't even, like this candidate reply, maybe they won't even reply. At some point they're like, um, this is not, the time so we have to think of that as well we always have to be mindful of people understanding what they're going through so it's very unrealistic for us to uh, expect a, a response like within two or four business days or something like that sometimes they um, are not going to respond at all and that's okay it doesn't mean that they are disengaged maybe in a month from now they're going to come back and say, Cecilia, remember that position that you said that um, one of your hiring partners was offering? I would really like to try it now. This is the best time for me. So let's keep that in mind as well. So allow space to that for them to respond, to understand that there might be no answers at some point. Uh, and uh, that's okay. The one thing that you have to think is, um, do I have um, the right, um, is my mind in the right place? Uh, am I trying to bring people here to um, be part of our company, to help the company grow and to, at the same time, help them to get out of a situation that is not a good situation for them and their families? Uh, also talking a little bit more about um, uh, remote work, uh, the relocation support and things that um, it's um, it might be nice to offer at uh, the point when after you've done the process and that you understood that you talked to this candidate, you understand that it's time to make them an offer and time to um, either uh, let them start remotely and then relocate or relocate them directly. Uh, if they are able to do that as soon as possible, let's always think about next steps. We have to think about families. Uh, we have to think about uh, how is this going to work? I have a great company working with us, great hiring partners that they have hired uh, a candidate um, from Ben Hack that I interviewed uh, a month ago. They actually hired her in a couple of days and uh, this was absolutely amazing. They made an offer, she accepted. Um, she has, she's uh, super young, has uh, less than three years of experience. So the good thing is that she is uh, using that uh, different, uh, she's not using the Global Talent Stream program that you, we usually use. She's using the program that is specific for Ukrainians so she can come without having over three years of experience. And uh, what they offer her uh, for relocation, um, they actually, the CEO of the company offered his house, his family house to host her for the first couple of weeks for her to have a home, for her to have a family and for her to be able to find a place here in, uh, in Toronto, Canada, um, the best place for her uh, instead of coming here and not having where to be. So that was something that I thought that it was an amazing best practice, uh, something that um, it's not go above and beyond. It's just understanding that 
Um, they are in a situation that most of us uh, are never going to go through in life. So uh, how necessary it is to be um, humanitarian, like to understand that, yes, we need to uh, get out of that, like, company mindset and always and also understand that okay these are people uh let's bring them over let's help them grow in their careers and let's help these families so this is a little bit about uh, what i wanted to say the don'ts if i can if if uh, it's okay for me to talk i know that i talk too much but i think that this is quite important uh i think that the one thing that we can take out of this is like do not uh flood them with messages i think that this is the one thing that they don't um, it's not nice to do, but um, send them one message, send them one message saying, okay, I would love to reach out to you. Let me know if you are available or if you don't reply, that's okay as well. We know that this is not a, a, um, this is not a time um, to uh, wait for a response. Um, let's, of course, not set unrealistic expectations for um, people replying at a timely manner. Um, and expected circumstances might happen, and uh, we have to understand that. Uh, let's not make the hiring process too long, too complex, with a lot of um, coding challenges. Uh, if, you can, if we can try to, for example, to send homework, uh, like pre, uh, pre-work, uh, take-home challenges where they can do it at their own pace, that's usually the best approach, and try to do the whole thing in a day, uh, try to not to make it like a four hour talk, a four hour whiteboard exer- whiteboarding exercise. And um, also I think that let's make it more about the company, the, the candidate itself and not the company. Uh, we just wanna wave them possibilities. These are opportunities that we can like show, show you. And if you want it, it's here for you to grab and for us to help. Um, and uh, always, of course, um, keeping in mind that um, you're hiring professionals. Like, it's not only about humanitarian. So you can go through the process understanding like, okay, this is not the right person for this position. This is not a right fit for a company. And that's okay. We're not asking you to, let's just hire people and bring people that don't even fit into our culture. It's not about that. It's about finding the right talent in a place that is a tech Pool, amazing tech pool of talent, which is uh, Ukraine, and uh, finding the right people for your company as well. So if you are about to disqualify a candidate, how do I tell him that? How do I tell her that? Uh, that's okay. It's a normal hiring process. So uh, one of the things that's good to say is just give the right feedback. Um, yeah, I'm seeing here that there's not a cultural fit. When we went through this and this part of the process, you didn't do well in this technically. And um, don't do things such as like, I don't want to take this risk. Uh, I don't want to take a risk of hiring you and you not being able to show up because uh, something has happened or there are circumstances that we can't uh, predict. So that's the only thing. Like we're not asking, uh, not Van Hack, not the candidates. They are not asking that uh, for you to um, uh, hire them uh, because they need to get out of that country. You're hiring them because you need great tech talent and that's it. And how do you deal with great professionals, great tech talent? Be honest in your process. They're not going to work. They're not going to work. And that's okay. Well, all of this information uh, is uh, on our Vent Hack blog. I know that Grace and Gretel have already shared uh, on the, um, on the um, uh, chat uh, that's uh, live here, uh, that's open here. So you can take a look at that information. If you need anything as well, feel free to reach out to me. And now I want to introduce you uh, to Yorgos. Uh, he is the head of talent at one of the companies that have been working with us for a while already at Forma AI. And he was responsible for hiring uh, one of the, a great talent, Artin, uh, for uh, one of the positions there. So welcome, Yorgos, and thank you, thank you all for uh, having me here. Thank you, Cecilia. So where should we get started? Do we want to just talk about the experience hiring? Ilya, where do you want me to begin? <laughs> yeah, um, maybe quickly introduce yourself um, and talk a little bit about Forma, um, and then we can jump in with your experience. Yeah, so uh, as everyone we sense, my name is Yorgos. I'm the head of talent at Forma AI. We are a Series A startup located in Toronto. 
I've been here for about a year. When I joined, we were 50 people. Now we're getting close to 140. So we've had a lot of growth in a short period of time. Um, and certainly, I, I'm sure like anyone who works with uh, the tech world right now, a lot of that growth came within our engineering team. In terms of my background, I've been working in recruitment for about 15 years now uh, in tech these last eight years. And uh, with Van Hack, I think, Ilya, you and I, my first interaction with Van Hack was a few years ago. I had uh, joined a company that already had a relationship with Van Hack. And so I was excited to be in a new position now where I also got to introduce another company to the work that you folks are doing and, and continue this hiring uh, process. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the intro. Um, yeah. So let's just jump in with uh, with this hire. So, how was it um, when you know you, you you first found out about the, the UK situation, and then kind of what did you what what made you kind of want to jump in and, and, and help out? Like, where did that motivation come from? Um, and then maybe before we get to the actually hiring Artev, like how was the process finding the, those uh, reaching out to candidates and those, maybe booking those first few interviews? Yeah. So maybe it would be helpful to say that by the time we kind of built this relationship with, with the candidate we hired from the Ukraine, um, our organization had already hired uh, eight folks from Van Hack, all senior level engineers. And we had done that over the course of a few months. And uh, really what it came from, and I, I think this was the exact conversation, is when I was joining uh, Forma or through my own interview process, the CEO was like, hey, you're going to be a talent team of one and I need you to hire like 10 engineers senior right away. And I remember being like, not a chance that we're doing that locally. Um, we will not be successful. We will not have the compensation. We will not be competitive in the market. Uh, so I said, if, if I'm being hired, and for me to be successful, I need us to partner with Van Hack. Um, so I remember having that conversation <laughs> explicitly during my own interview wow. process. Um, and so the reason I mentioned this is we had done a fair amount of hiring and interview up to that point. And so the organization as a whole had never connected with talent outside of North America and had never really uh, kind of explored the idea of one, relocating people or potentially allowing people to work remotely out of Canada. So we had uh, done a lot of work and like what that looks like, what is it to interview people abroad, to interview people who maybe speak English as a subsequent language. So Cecilia, I really appreciated everything you just spoke about. We can probably go into more detail about what it's like to train your team on successfully connecting with folks from Van Hack. Um, but uh, the benefit here was, you know, we saw this initiative with what you were doing with the Ukraine and I guess like the obvious was, well, we can help and we can hire, but I want to give credit to our recruiter that we work with uh, through Van Hack. Um, so his name's Jose. He's, a, you know, a member of the talent team. And it was him. He just frankly sent me the profile of uh, Artem, who he ended up hiring. And it's like, Yorgos, I know what your team is looking for. Here is this individual's background skill set. This is what they've been looking for. Um, sent it right to my you know, inbox. And it was like, yeah, you're right. I want to chat. So let's get this going. <laughs> uh, so I had the benefit of, I think probably most folks who have a relationship with Van Hack of having a partner who knew our business, knew our tech stack, knew what we were looking for and just kind of fast tracked everything. So, yeah, no, that's a really long answer to your question. Can you tell that I really am excited about Van Hack and the work that we do? Is it, is it obvious enough or should I have a better poker face? <laughs> no, it's definitely obvious. And I've never heard of uh, someone mentioning like in their job interview that to, to work with us. So that, that, that's really cool to hear. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a contingent. It's like, listen, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to try and get that more with more, <laughs> more talented <laughs> folks somehow. Um, but no, uh, so, so let's talk about the Artem uh, interview. Um, uh, how did it go? What was it, what was it like? Were there any hiccups? Um, anything people should learn, can, can learn from? Yeah, so maybe I can just kind of talk about like numbers and dates. And so our first touch point with Artem was February 25th. And we had an offer signed by March 11th. So we're looking at nine business days for us to go from first email to offer signed, which is ludicrous. I mean, if anyone is involved in engineering recruiting, like 
our lead time is usually around 50 days. And so for us to have a successful hire in nine days uh, was great. It's also a stat that I don't share too, too much internally because I don't want to set the expectation that we'll ever be able to move this fast. But uh, it goes back to what Cecilia had said earlier. We were mindful of kind of the circumstances that this candidate was in and most likely that being able to get things to move through a pace that is as fast as they needed it to be. And so our team was open right away of being like, okay, if this person wants to get everything done in a day, if we're wanting to do back to back or if they need it spread out, let's just be prepared for it. In Arnhem's case, it was an ability to move fast and, and I think it benefited everyone as a result. Um, and so that I, I, I am still kind of flabbergasted by the, the, the speed of the hire itself. Um, but maybe when it comes to the communications and the profile, you know, I have, uh, I was looking through my notes, I, I take a bunch of notes when I'm interviewing someone and, and so does our hiring team. And when I looked at Arnhem's profile, the one thing that stood out to me right away was everything in his resume was measurable, like he made an, uh, an effort to attach a metric to success. And that's such a great skill set to have of when you're able to quantify your accomplishments, especially for engineers, because usually there's a reduction of time or their sort of iterations and product growth that they're working on. And uh, in our first conversation, and I, I literally have like the quote that I was uh, like, oh, I, I really want to move this person through the interview process. You know, I sort of just asked him like, tell me a bit about your background and, and what's exciting you. And he had said like, I like what I do um, day to day to problem solve. I like learning new technologies and I just like being a software engineer. And it was like the simplicity of that last statement was like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes we don't need to make it more complicated than that. At the end of the day, this is something you're choosing to do, and uh, you're just kind of excited by it. Very cool. So how many in those nine business days, how many interviews did you have? Um, was it like, yeah, just tell us about that, because one of the things we're, we're trying to share with people is to like, like you did, to move quickly, but also keep it light in terms of a number of engagements. Yeah. So a typical process when we've hired folks from Van Hack before, and, and I would say this is true for candidates regardless of location, is there would be a first interview with me or someone from talent. So we would have like a 20 to 30 minute phone screen, get it to know a little bit about a person's background, the projects that they've been a part of. From there, if that conversation is successful, they would connect with either our CTO or a director of engineering for a deeper dive into the technology projects they've done. Usually there's a day or two between those two interviews. If that conversation with the hiring manager is successful, then they go to a technical interview, which for us can be anywhere between 90 minutes to two hours. And it uh, isn't a coding exercise. It's not like an algorithm test. We're getting them to walk through two scenarios where we can have a, a better sense of their approach to um, problem solving and, and certainly to development. If that's successful, we're able to make an offer. So given Arnhem's circumstance and, and sort of wanting to, wanting to be mindful of time and process, we skipped my phone call uh, because I have such confidence in Jose and the team at Van Hack when you, know, you highlight a profile for me. It was like, you know what? I trust that this is someone who is going to go through next steps for me. So let me get them in front of the hiring manager right away. And so they went there and then it was in our director of engineering. He thought the conversation was great. Uh, and so th from there did the technical interview. And as a last step, we had uh, our CTO connect with Arnhem. That was less about deciding whether or not we wanted to make the hire, but instead to be here to answer questions. I think Cecilia, you brought up a lot of circumstances there was, hey, let's talk about if you wanna work remotely for a period of time before you're relocating. Let's talk if you want to relocate right away. Let's talk hours of work. In Arnim's case, he had left the Ukraine, sorry, left Ukraine to go to Turkey. And we had never hired someone in that much of a time zone difference. And so what would that be like? So it's a little bit more of the, let's make sure we can successfully onboard you in the way that you need. And let's also make sure you hear from us that we want to be flexible. And sometimes that's easier to say over a call rather than email. Yeah, definitely. That uh, that last kind of com get comfortable call is, is very important. Um, 
in a case, case like this. So, so uh, I'm curious, what was the result? Like, did he want to start r- remote? Um, and when he was abroad, how's yeah. the application process going now? I, I think he's arriving soon or has arrived already. Yeah, which is also sort of like, uh, I, I, again, I'm still in shock of the speed of the hire, but then also he's the candidate from Van Hack that's moved, the, is relocating the fastest. So we've had people working with us for months who haven't uh, arrived just yet, and, and now Arnim gets to join in around the same time. So if I'm not mistaken, and Karan, and, and also one of your partner, Shervani, who we work with on the immigration side, who, again, is a, a stellar human being. Um, so yeah, I got the email that their approval letters for Arnim and his family uh, were made on April 4th, and then he's relocating on April 28th, so in eight days. Uh, So very fast turnaround. Uh, In our case, he has started working remotely for us while he's uh, been outside of Canada. That's something we've offered to all of our Van Hack candidates. I also think it's a little bit of the reality of COVID-19, or or, or certainly was when we began this relationship, is that we know processing times can take longer. Um, So when I had first worked with Van Hack years ago, uh, we had made offers and waited for someone to relocate, but that's something that we didn't do now, uh, unless the, the candidate wanted it. Yeah, it's definitely become the norm now post post COVID um, with remote start and even remote yeah. after you relocate, you just keep, keep working on it. Yeah, it's a game changer uh, because someone is able to get started right away. We don't have this gap. I also think there's something to be said about being in your home environment for the most part and getting settled in a new country and sort of new workplace practices and kind of getting that familiarity before you move. I, I'm sure there's uh, there's some good information as to why that benefits both parties. Uh, but to, to something you just said, Ilya, is we do have one candidate who we've hired who is staying permanently remote. Um, and that wasn't something that we had thought we would do, but the quality of their work and um, the individual was like, yeah, stay where you are. If, if you don't want to move, you certainly don't need to. There's value to be added, regardless of location. Amen. I agree with that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, I guess, like, any other tips or best practices that you, you could share well, before we open up to questions from, from uh, the, uh, the audience here? Um, any yeah. one of things that come to mind or... Maybe there's uh, two. And so one will kind of go back into Cecilia. Sorry, I keep on mentioning your name. You're probably sick of it. But I I think in terms of recruitment, and, and we talk about this regardless of where someone is. And so, you know, be mindful of someone's location, maybe what's happening in their local environments. Um, with some of the uh, uprising that we saw last year in the United States, for instance, through like Black Lives Matter, it was something we were mindful of if we were interviewing candidates in locations where things might have been extra impactful and, and acknowledging that. And I thought that was important through these conversations with anyone who's located in Ukraine and, and certainly in our conversations with Artem. Um, I felt nervous, admittedly, at the start of the chat of just being like, hey, it it would feel silly for me not to acknowledge that I know what is happening right now around you. And I, and I don't want to pretend as though like we aren't aware. So I simply was like, I am sorry, this is happening to you. And I'm happy that maybe we were able to support you in this capacity Um, and acknowledge that if there is ever a time where you are scheduled for an interview conversations or whatever, um, tell us and we can cancel, we can move things and it won't impact any of those uh, hiring decisions, if even if it's taking place during. So if there's anything going on around you that needs your attention, just let us know. Um, or if that's just you're not in maybe a headspace to go through a technical interview. The last thing I want to say, and uh, people are, you're probably all sick of hearing me talk, but this was just one of my most favorite things that occurred uh, with hiring folks from Van Hack and working remotely. So I am, um, during COVID-19, went home uh, to my parents' house where I grew up and uh, worked from there for a while. My parents are both immigrants to Canada, and so I'm, I'm a first-generation Canadian, and so a lot of these stories really resonate with me. And uh, my mummy was home the entire time while I was interviewing, and she would listen on my calls. Uh, and uh, she would listen to my phone calls with Van Hack folks in particular. And when we were making offers, and there was uh, one day where she 
the individual we hired had children and they were crying uh, because we made them a job offer and they're relocating. I started crying. And then my mummy pops up from the living room and she's crying because she's like, Oh, I'm listening. And she's like, God, I wish when I moved to Canada, I was able to like have a job and have the support. So you have all of these strangers crying in front of each other. And uh, in a, I, I say this really flighty and, and you work with Van Hack because of the quality of candidates outright i think the other stuff is just this incredible added bonus um and this ukrainian initiative is is uh, beyond words to really describe what you're doing and the support that you're offering individuals um but i wanted to also acknowledge that it's uh it's happened with other conversations with with people throughout and uh i'll just never laugh so hard as my mummy coming into one of my interviews crying and then i'm like what's going on <laughs> why are you crying she's like well i'm listening to your phone call and i was like okay well, maybe you should so yeah that's my van hack story <laughs> Oh, that's so beautiful. I, I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what's happening here? Do I need to hop off this call? You know? <laughs> well, that's, that's so nice. Uh, thank you for, for the, sharing that. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I wasn't expecting to hear such a great story. And, and thank, thank you for that. And um, all those tips were, were fantastic as well. Excited to see Artem arrive in, in eight days, um, which, is, which is really cool. Uh, we actually had our first Van Hack uh, Ukraine relocation um, happen, was it yesterday or a few days ago? Cecilia uh, shared that story recently. So we're, there's a few people now relocating. And I didn't mention this off the top, but uh, we've had eight, nine hires actually happen um, from Ukraine candidates. Um, uh, yeah, so we're, we're hoping to, to, to get to double digits soon to 10 and, and more. And there's a lot of candidates still available. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just uh, go, please sign up, interview them. They're, they're all available there. Um, so we, we're, we're hoping to, to bring as many people, uh, uh, you know, as we can, that, if, that they want to and are available, of course. Um, uh, but yeah, okay, great. Well, let's, let's jump into Q and A. Just, uh, I see some, uh, familiar faces. So Manu, Carrie, uh, really nice to see you here in, in the webinar. Um, if anyone else has questions, uh, Tatiana from Kelowna, welcome. Um, maybe we can, we'll, we'll hang out here for another you know, five minutes or however long, actually, we have another 15 minutes, but uh, we might wrap early if we, uh, if we don't have questions and if any of the speakers, I see Celia, maybe you have your hand up there, want to jump in. I always want to talk right here. <laughs> no, I think just, just to tell one thing that I think it's great, um, that it's a, an amazing practice as well, that we try to do uh, as much as we can here at Van Hack is to communicate with these candidates. Uh, like uh, Jurgis said about his um, um, this amazing story that he has, I think that uh, communicating with the candidates and talking to them, especially through this period now, like that they are very wary, like of the situation. Like when am I coming? Uh, they are going like through um, uh, through times that they don't know exactly when they're going to get their passports back. Uh, they have to go to the centers. They have to do the biometrics. So these things are can be a little bit um, uh, for for some folks can be a little bit like you know like oh uh, I'm moving like I'm going to a whole other country. So make sure you communicate with them. Uh, I feel that this is the best part, like getting to understand and to know like okay what's happening with you. Let me know, and we get some of the most amazing responses when they get there. I recently had a hire um, from Ukraine. She just arrived and she was so happy she was there. And it's great to hear those stories and to know that, okay, you landed safely, you're there uh, with a family, everything is fine. So always like keeping the communication is great. The same thing happened to another hire that we made from, um, uh, from uh, U Ukraine before it all started. Like uh, it was uh, a male hire. Like so before the borders were closed for them to get out, there was this hire of mine that uh, we were just waiting for him to get out. So communicating and understanding, are you still there? Like, how are things going? This is good for them. It's just like showing that you care that even though I, that's what I always tell my team, like we cannot be there and take them away of the situation with our hands, but we can be there like uh, psychologically, like telling them we're here, we know what's happening. Uh, like Jorga said, I had no idea what to tell this person. Like, uh, it's just like being there, just communicating and saying, I know what you're going through. I, actually, I have no idea what you're going through because I've never been through this, but I'm here if you need to talk. I think that's the best way. Yeah, I think sometimes we, we feel helpless. I, you know, I certainly do when you see all the things on the news and um, all the 
tragedy and horrors that are happening and uh, thinking what what can you do and maybe you, there's nothing you can do but just maybe one one, one message one conversation um it, it definitely does help and you, you you hear that from people um yeah yeah it's it's tough but you can only do do so much and, and try and help when you can with what you can there's a something you mentioned too in there just about the relocation side of things and, and we didn't mention this but um so at Forma, we're on a size where we have social committees. And so there's a few different groups. Um, and the social committee is the ones responsible for folks now that they're relocating. So making sure that there's someone to greet them at the airport, if that's possible, making sure that there's any sort of welcome. And if there are children involved, how can we help with that? Um, but what I will say is that even if you don't have a social committee, uh, when folks found out that we were hiring people from outside of uh, Canada and that they were relocating, I got a lot of Slack messages from my team members being like, hey, can I like help when this person shows up? Do they need like a tour guide? Do they need someone to help them find an apartment? Um, so I, I really believe that like you can kind of create either if a formal committee exists already or just have one that's like a strike group. Um, and it's something that I have found really beneficial is a uh, as talent, as recruiting, don't feel like you need to own that yourselves. Uh, it, 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 there's no, there's most likely a group of really enthusiastic team members that you're working with who, who would be here to help. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um, it's a whole team effort and, and I think it, it'll make people on your team feel like they're um, more engaged and, and uh, included in, in, in the hire and help feel good about helping others. I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have one question coming through. Um, Raman is asking, Andrea shared with me during consult day, waiving placements fee and creating folders to sign bonuses are closed for insurer. That's a great message to share with us. Yeah, that, um, that's, that's something, something we're trying to do. Um, Raman, uh, Raman, uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronoun mispronouncing your name, uh, Raman, I believe. Um, yeah, we're, we're, be as generous as you can in your offers, be as generous as you can in your relocation package. Um, yeah, uh, signing bonuses, all those kind of things. Uh, I think this is definitely the time to be, um, yeah, generous. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a really good point. And Ilya, not only that, I feel that for example, like we have, um, one of the and hackers that got hired, um, very, very, uh, young, uh, with less than uh, two years of experience, only one year of experience. And one of the things that the company is doing is like, okay, like we want to because we know you have potential. So see the potential in these people as well. They're actually paying for a lot of courses for this person before they get to Canada. Like they're paying for courses already for uh, the person to start understanding a bit more of what they're doing. Like, so instead of like, if you can do the remote part, like if uh, the team cannot... Uh, start them off remotely, uh, why not um, set, a, set up like some time for training, for uh, understanding a little bit more like of the company itself, like some onboarding. So even before they get in here, if they get, if they have access and if they can do that, offering these courses, like um, often get them more like engaged, happy, and they can think of something else instead of being like only in lines to uh, wait for passports and things like that. This was something that really helped this candidate. Nice. Thanks, Cecilia. Awesome. All right. Um, maybe a few more questions. Looks like we have one coming in here. Uh, Michelle from Unbounce. Hey, uh, big fan of Unbounce. We actually started Van Hack with an Unbounce landing page. Um, so uh, thanks, Michelle, for that. Um, wondering how exactly the visa process works. If applicants apply from abroad, do they receive their visa upon landing in Canada or do they need to wait? Or, uh, to get it before coming. Uh, Karana, this is a question for you. Yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, they would apply from abroad and um, they would need to do that biometric step. And once that's done, we're seeing approvals come within about a week or, or I'll, I'll say two weeks is the official guideline, but most of our approvals come within a week. And then um, they would just send their passport for stamping. So in their passport, they'll stamp a visa before they come. And then with that visa, they can, they can book their flight and come to Canada. Uh, and then they'd be issued a work permit upon landing here in Canada, and they can uh, legally work for you uh, once they're here. Sorry, where, where do they send the visa, sorry, the passport to? They send it to the consulate or? 
Yeah, it's a visa application center in the country that they're living in. So um, yeah, there's pretty much one in, in, in most countries. And you know. Yeah, and, and we'll definitely help with that um, when, when the time comes, Michelle. So um, part of the Van Hack uh, offering is help with global mobility when you make a hire with us. And uh, this is definitely something we're including in the Ukraine initiative here. So um, yeah, and uh, Michelle, I'm not sure if, if you're aware, but uh, Unbounce Hire is hired too. Uh, that hackers in uh, the past, I believe, in 2018 or 2019, um, Stella and uh, um, oh my, Alex. Yeah. So anyway, um, just an FYI. Okay. Uh, great. Well, um, thanks everyone for for being here. Thank you so much again to our amazing panelists. Um, yeah, I uh, get it's. Uh, I say, uh, Juris is actually staying up pretty late. It's. Uh, Close, getting close to 8 p.m. there uh, where he is. So um, <laughs> thanks for staying staying late with us here. Um, Karan, Cecilia, thank you as well for all the amazing content and contributions. Everybody, the, uh, this webinar will be, uh, has been recorded and it will be online for, for the reference. I believe uh, the link to the Ukraine guide has been shared as well. Vanhack.com slash Ukraine, if you sign up there, uh, our team will get in touch with you and help you connect with, with candidates. There's dozens of great tech talent uh, available for interviews. Um, and we'll help really, really happy to help you hire more. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's any other questions, concerns, um, we're here to help. So uh, thanks again, everyone. We'll uh, have a great rest of the day and talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa.